guys, a lot of you have been asking me to give you a peek into my naughty bucket. And there's a lot of other locks, but uh, uh, these are the ones that have been giving me the most amount of trouble. I've been picking on these the longest or spent the most amount of time on. And I guess the title of this video could also be, uh, What Lock Should I Use on My Door? Because I think pretty much any of these would, uh, would be a super lock. Let's start over here on the right. This is a Popeyes. I got this from Andre. They call this the Multiponto multi-point lock. It looks innocent enough. It's one of those locks fits obviously into the door frame. Kind of cheap stamp metal. It's one of those locks you have to pick it twice in order to get it open if they secure it firmly enough. I haven't had any luck. And the reason for that, there's your multi multi-point. This key actually has dimples on all four sides. It's keyed, the, dimpled the same on both sides and it's the same on the, the top and the bottom. When you look in the keyway, see if I can get it to cooperate here, maybe you can make it out, but only the dimples are only on three sides of this lock. They're very precise. They don't tolerate, there's no slop in these thing at all. I have not gotten so much as a false set. So if you're looking for a good door, you're down in, this came from Brazil. If you're down in that region, take a serious look at the Multiponto. Uh, just move across here. This is a lock that was sent to me as a present from Igor. It looks like a normal Stanley and it's, it's worth at least 75 cents, but to me this is worth a lot more than that. This was actually sent to me, if you take a look and rotate the collar slowly, if I can get it to work there. Anyway, you can see that this is a Primus. It says Primus behind the shielding. It is a custom pinned so we got some awfully challenging bidding there. And not only that, there's a sidebar which is also custom made. I have never gotten so much as a fault set on this. I sent this lock to a very gifted picker, chess guy 125. I did not send him the key. I just sent him the lock. He unboxed it and picked it on camera without a break in filming. Just awesome skills. <laughs> so much, much greater skills than I have by by every measure. Um, I also have, this is an Abus that was sent in, I guess about a year ago, nice and shiny. You might think, well, Abus, you know, it's, a, yeah, interchangeable core, uh, model 80, uh, 83, big deal. But when you take a look at it, it's a wide open keyway. And I wish I could remember the name of the fellow that sent this on, very generous. Uh, if you can make it out there, he scraped it to make it look like a you know, sleeper lock, wide open keyway, but that says Scorpion. Scorpion is a lock. I've picked one before. Actually, I picked a Marx. Uh, this company's gone by several different names. It's gone, uh, title is also CX5, but the most, uh, the latest owner has renamed it Scorpion again. I first showed this in video number 337 back in July of 13. Beautiful lock. We have seven pins and then we have laser cut sliders on the bottom. So you got to pick both. I've picked one of these before, but this one I have had no luck with whatsoever. Just a beautiful lock. If I had to lock something up, if I had anything of value, this would be the padlock to lock it up with. I had a challenge lock from the UK. This is from UK bump keys. And when you look at this, it looks like a oh, simple dimple lock, but this is actually a Bantam lock. It's been around since 2004. I'm afraid to open it. Uh, when you take a look at the key, I've tried everything on this. You'll notice it goes in both ways. It doesn't matter. You can put it, the key in either way. It doesn't care. But there are pins, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but there are pins on both sides of the keyway on the top. Nothing on the bottom, just there, but the uh, the pins are opposing each other, so you've got to get a pick in between them, and those pins have different tensions on them. So a very light spring on one side, very heavy spring on the other, making it really difficult to feel your way into this lock. I have gotten a false set on this lock. I've tried every technique you can imagine. I've got no, not a single open, nothing. Uh, another one, this came from Rune. This is about a year ago. It's a Triving. You might think, ah, oh, Triving, no big deal. Well, then you look at the bidding on this bad boy, and it looks a little bit weird. It's a six-pin lock. It looks like, from that key, it looks like a lot more than six. And if you look at the top of the lock, you can see it is six-pinner. Um, this is called the D12. Now, it's not going to be easy to show you on the key. You can see some pretty sharp angles. 
but you can definitely see the problem right here. When we have a key that looks like this with two or possibly three very low cut pins in the front high, and then a couple of high, uh, high cut ones hiding behind them and then I have to go around that corner literally it's impossible to reach or at least for me so far to reach those high cut pins without oversetting those two or three low cut pins in the front. I've got nothing on this one, not even a fault set. I've only seen one of these successfully open before on uh, YouTube by Caveman1966 and he did it probably close to three years ago. He was the first guy to do it. Um, I have an interesting lock here. This is uh, a lock from Adrian Weber Security Elements. You guys might have seen this before. It is an Abus. Looks kind of normal until you look at this keyway. Now this is called the TSB 5000. I've been working on this since September 2013 and I've got nothing on it. And I think you can see why. Uh, the pins are literally resting on that piece of warding. And this is a six pin lock and it's got some side pins but they're passive so don't worry about those dimples. All you got to do is pick those side pins and this is about as an extreme warding as I've ever, or extreme bidding as I've ever seen on this lock and also extreme warding. Uh, you got to get past those low cut ones to get those high cut ones and when the pins are literally resting on the warding it's really really difficult to do. So have not gotten into that. Um, there's a very similar lock here. This is a CISA and it is exactly the same thing except if you notice, if I get it to focus, the warding is the opposite direction but it doesn't matter. Uh, you have the same issues so I've got two almost identical locks. This one again was a challenge lock. I have not given up on it. It's still mummied but I'm not holding my breath on either that Abus or, or the CISA. Um, moving back here we have probably one of my favorite locks. This is a Maurer lock made by a company called Maurer but it's licensed from Multilock. Uh, you guys I think have seen something very similar to this before. This is a pin and pin design. This is what the key looks like. This one is quite a challenge. We got again a very low cut and then we got some really high cuts hiding behind it. Pin and pin design. Uh, it looks very similar to the MT5 Plus from which this is licensed by the way. We have the interactive pin right there and that prevents you from impressioning this key or taking an impression of this key and then uh, making another key. And then we have the laser slider. Now on the MT5 Plus uh, you have the pins on one side and the laser slider on the other so it kind of makes it easy to get in there and pick the pins and then move over and pick the slider. The Maurer is just a little bit different technology. Again I don't know if you can make it out but the pins are on, at least in this case, are on the bottom or I'm sorry on the top and the slider is directly opposing those pins. So when you're trying to pick the pin and pin you're constantly bumping into those sliders, making it very difficult. And then when you try to pick the slider, you're obviously bumping in to the pin. Super difficult. I have not gotten so much as a fault set on this in all the years that I've had it. The last one. Let me move this out because this is a really interesting lock. Um, this is the Gerda. Uh, I first filmed this back in February of 2013. I'd asked for some help. It was video 209 if you're interested. A Gerda, just a very cool lock. Let me get this key out and I can pull that out. Of, come out of there. There we go. Very weird looking key. It's four dimples opposing. Uh, we have a very unique tensioner. It's actually crimped into the key and it grabs on the bottom of the lock right there. I built a tensioner. I have managed to tension it. However, I have not managed to SPP it, rake it, bump it, or any of the other techniques than you can imagine. So I worked on this for the better part of a year with no luck, not even a fault set. Again, this is a European style, so you not only have to uh, get that key in there correctly, you not only have to pick it once, but you've got to pick this thing twice. And since 2013, I haven't even managed to pick it once. Nothing. Um, the Gerda factory laughed at me when, they, when I did that video. Uh, and then they sent me, before I even got that one picked, and this is still in the box, they sent me the brand new, let me move this back, the brand new Gerda G1000 and they assure me that this one has even higher tolerances and is much more difficult to pick than this one. So if this one is impossible, I can only imagine how difficult this one will be. Someday in the future perhaps 
I will get into this one and I can then unbox the Gerda G1000. Anyway, fellas, again, this can be titled, you know, this is my naughty bucket. This is most of them anyway. Uh, but it can also be titled, What Lock Should I Buy for My Door or to Lock Up My Stuff? Fellas, there's our, there's our nine excellent locks from which to choose. Thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal, and no, I will not sell or trade these. These are my challenge locks, and uh, I never give away a lock until after I pick it. That's my rule of thumb, because it's always got something to teach me. Thanks, guys. Thank you.